So the the psychology of that is actually fascinating. I don't think we'll have enough time to talk about that, but I I have to talk to you about the human side of things. So myself and our team at MIT recently released a paper on functional vigilance of drivers while using autopilot. This is work we've been doing since autopilot was first released publicly over three years ago, mm -hmm. collecting video of driver faces and driver body. So I saw that you tweeted a quote from the abstract, so I can at least uh, guess that you've glanced at it. Yeah, I read it. Can I talk you through what we found? Sure. Okay, so it appears that in the data that we've collected, that drivers are maintaining functional vigilance such that we're looking at 18,000 disengagements from autopilot, 18,900, and annotating, were they able to take over control in a timely manner? So they were there present looking at the road uh, to take over control. Okay, so this uh, goes against what, what many would predict from the body of literature on vigilance with automation. Now the question is, do you think these results hold across the broader population? So ours is just a small subset. Do you think, uh, one of the criticism is that, you know, there's a small minority of drivers that may be highly responsible where their vigilance decrement would increase with autopilot use. I, I think this is all really gonna be swept. I, I mean, the, the system's improving so much, so fast, that this is gonna be a moot point very soon where vigilance is, like if something's many times safer than a person, then adding a person uh, does, the, the, the effect on safety is, is limited. Um, and in fact, uh, it could be negative. That's really interesting. So the, uh, the, so, so the fact that a, a human may, some percent of the population may uh, exhibit a vigilance decrement will not affect the overall statistics numbers of safety. No, in fact, I think it, it will become uh, very, very quickly, maybe even towards the end of this year, but I'd say I'd be shocked if it's not next year at the latest, that um, having, the pers having a human intervene will decrease safety. Decrease. Uh, it's, it's like imagine if you're in an elevator. Now it used to be that there were elevator operators. Um, and and you you couldn't go in an elevator by yourself and and work the the lever to move between floors, um, and now uh, nobody wants an elevator operator because the automated elevator that stops the floors is much safer than the elevator operator. And in fact, it would be quite dangerous to have someone with a lever that can move the elevator between floors. So that's a that's a really powerful statement and really interesting one. Uh, but I also have to ask from a user experience and from a safety perspective, one of the passions for me algorithmically is uh, camera-based detection of, uh, of just sensing the human, but detecting what the driver is looking at, cognitive load, body pose. On the computer vision side, that's a fascinating problem, but do you, th and there's many in industry who believe you have to have camera-based driver monitoring. Do you think there is, could be benefit gained from driver monitoring? If you have a system that's, that's at or, that's at or below uh, human level reliability, then driver monitoring makes sense. But if, if your system is dramatically better, more reliable than, than a human, then driver monitoring, monitoring is not, does not help much. And uh, like I said, you, you just like as an, you wouldn't want someone into, like you wouldn't want someone in the elevator, if you're, if you're in an elevator, do you really want someone with a big lever, some, some random person operating an elevator between floors? They, they could, I wouldn't trust that. Or I'd rather have the buttons. Okay, you're optimistic about the pace of improvement of the system, that from what you've seen with a full self-driving car, computer. The rate of improvement is exponential.